The S&P 500 under pressure right now while the major indices are higher for the year, including the S&P 500. The market breadth itself has been really brutal. You know, there are more losers than winners in that index. 274 stocks are down for the year. In fact, 71 are down more than 10 percent. 77 are down more than 20 percent. Paul Dietrich, Fairfax Global CEO and Chief Investment Officer, joins me now. Paul, you think this, this could be a harbinger of things to come, negative things to come for our economy? Well, I, you know, at some point we are going to have a bear market recession, but I think it's going to be sometime in the future. I mean, the big story, I think, about the S&P that nobody is talking about is that with the 20 percent earnings growth of the S&P 500, which we're getting, everyone seems to be focused on all the kind of negatives. But because the market has gone down over the last month and that 20 percent earnings growth, the forward price to earnings ratio of the S&P as of today is 15.9. We haven't seen that in years. Not only that, but for the first time in years, it's below its five year uh, average, which is 16.3. The market is undervalued. And, you know, right now is the time people ought to be buying. They ought to be paying attention to what the grandmother told them when they were little kids, you know, buy low, sell high. Uh, so, and so, Paul, let me jump in there because is it is it I, I don't disagree with you. I think we're setting up for a major rally into the end of the year, but I think it's going to be extraordinarily selective. So do you just do you throw darts at this market, in your opinion? Is it that oversold, or are there specific areas that you're looking at? Well, uh, one of the things that we all know, and it seems like the market has been normalizing uh, or restructuring, is that five stocks, five big tech stocks, have, have made up most of the performance of the S&P 500 until recently. And now it seems like, uh, not today, but uh, over the last few weeks, you've seen kind of uh, the 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 S and P 500 become more normal. I think that's good. Uh, I think the two things that, if you look at what investors are saying, they're worried about two things: it's the elections, it's the trade war with China. It's not really earnings because 75 percent of all the earnings uh, uh, reports right. that have come by so far have exceeded right. uh, expectations. It's those two things, and the market hates uncertainty. Yeah. Uh, and so in the meantime, it's interesting things. because coming in to last week, I didn't see this weekend, uh, uh, corporate America, the guys who actually go out and make the money, uh, their biggest worry was the strong dollar, uh, uh, raw material cost and then wages going higher. Interesting. Hey, Paul, yeah, but those are good problems. Those, to are, have. those are high end problems. Thank you very much. See you soon, buddy. We want to bring back Aaron Gibbs and Paul Dietrich. Aaron. Uh, let me tell you what's interesting to me. Uh, okay, Amazon got another upgrade, $2,400 target. Alta got an upgrade. Lululemon got an upgrade. And I'm seeing these retailers intraday look pretty interesting. Macy's came off the lows. Children's Place came off the lows. Ralph Lauren came off the lows. I'm thinking Santa Claus rally. I'm thinking a strong consumer. Is this sort of a signal maybe that could be possible? Yeah, we've been talking to clients about, one, we have this really good GDP growth. We're starting to see wage inflation. Retailers have been forecasting this holiday season to be the biggest ever. You know, their big problem right now is actually staffing. And so we see that, that once those numbers start coming in, once we start seeing those holiday sales, that could be a real push at the end of the year. It could really create that you know, cons uh, consumer confidence and, and, and flow through into the market. So this is something that we're looking for for the end of the year. And today, yeah, consumer discretionary is up across the board. Paul, you know, we kind of touched on this earlier in the show. And again, with Amazon, new target 2400. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you're going to try to make money, you pile back into the winners. We know they're winners. We know that a stock like Amazon is going to do extraordinarily well. Lulu's had a great year. Ulta has had a great year. Uh, I mean, these are the kind of names that uh, looks like investors are now buying on these dips. Uh, I think that's smart uh, because I do believe the market's undervalued. But, you know, this is going to be a great Christmas season, as, as we were just talking about, because not only do you have higher wages coming into play, you have the tax cuts coming into play. And lastly, uh, still, people are making money in the stock market, even though, you know, people forget that it was just a month ago we reached record highs. Uh, and it's about 14 
$10 trillion over, over the last, since the last recession, that is piled into people's 401ks, and, uh, and that's all going to make the difference. And I think this is going to be the best Christmas season for retailers of all stripes that we've ever seen. Ever. Wow. All right. We got you down on that. Uh, another interesting move today, cybersecurity names. Uh, there's a couple of reports out there. Facebook uh, wants to do something. Uh, FireEyes looked at uh, Palo Alto Networks, Check, Checkpoint, Splunk, a lot of these names. Uh, it, it, these sort of deals, uh, I think, also help the market. If, if something like this materializes, in fact, I think IBM, you know, I just don't understand. I think they should have been doing a lot more deals, some big deals, jump in the cloud, make these large acquisitions, spend the money instead of buying back your own stock. But how important is it maybe to get a little spark in this market with perhaps some um, merger activity? Uh, yeah, that would be great, as well as um, you know, more IPOs. Uh, that would be another thing that could really help the, the markets overall. So, you know, M&A activity, the IPOs, any of that coming back in really full force could be Last week really there was a room, or some scuttlebutt about Planeteer coming uh, IPO. I know Uber maybe next year. Yeah. I mean, those are big names, though, and, and a lot of them, obviously now, by now, Uber's a household name. There's no doubt that would add a lot of, uh, a lot of umph to this market. Yeah. And so, you know, something that would get people excited about getting back into the markets, any cash that's on the sidelines, those are the types of things that could really encourage the markets to go even further. You know, Paul, one of the things with these big tech names that are winners, they are winners because they've been very acquisitive, right? They've gone out, they've spent big money, uh, and it saved them. Facebook's acquisition of Instagram saved them. Now, I don't know that an acquisition of a cybersecurity company will save them, but it might help them a lot, particularly facing the scrutiny that they're going to be facing on both sides of the Atlantic, FireEye was able to help Facebook uh, break that DNC uh, uh, intrusion. Uh, they helped them with finding these uh, six or eight hundred rogue, uh, you know, rogue accounts. So it, it might be a smart move on their part, but I think broadly speaking, it, to your point, trillions of dollars have been created out there. People want to see that money put to work by these corporations. Yeah, uh, Charles, this is the Achilles heel of at least many of the tech companies is that people are nervous about their privacy, they're nervous about their information being stolen, and they have got to do something about it. And that's why it's so important uh, that there be more merger activity and it be seen that they are doing something about it by, by effectively dealing with cybersecurity. All right, Aaron and Paul, thank you both.